This is the New Jersey School of Conservation located in Stokes State Forest, New Jersey. Part of Montclair State University, the 200-acre campus is on the site of a Depression-era Work Progress Administration work camp. Dr. Bill Thomas is an anthropologist and the director of the school. He says the school is all about hands-on learning. When you come here, um, we make a real effort not to overwhelm you with the facts and figures of the size of the beaver's tooth and all that stuff. You know, you can Google it. We do things like make butter. How many people do you know how to make butter? To bake bread, to, we're gonna make charcoal this year. Hmm. Um, so it's, it's all that sense of, like we'll go out and catch frogs and let people handle things and discover that they aren't afraid of these critters. They really, well, that's not what I thought it would be. And really that's what you know, we're really striving for as a, a school and a staff. Dr. Thomas started his academic life studying economics, but changed to anthropology in graduate school. Then he hit the road. I would travel, and as I traveled, I started off going across the United States, and I would go to wilder and wilder places. I'd work, save my money, ah. get in the car, and take off. But as my taste in the wild uh, became more, you know, expansive. expansive, yeah, there we go. I, you know, I, I next I was in Africa, and I spent some time in the Serengeti by myself. And then I went to Australia for six months, and that was my first trip up to New Guinea. New Guinea would become his life's work. There's a thousand languages spoken in New Guinea, and on the Papuan side there's a thing called Neo-Melanesian Pidgin. I speak Neo-Melanesian Pidgin, and a little of the local dialects, so, uh, languages. So by trying to communicate, automatically you break down a barrier, you know, because typically the white guys just walk around taller than everybody else and everybody looks at them. But when you can walk up and say, you know, what's happening in the local dialect, and then, hey, I'd like to go here. People end up buying you food, they want to talk to you. And as an anthropologist, I know a lot about their different cultures, so we can talk about their sing-sings and where they live and how they do certain things. So, you know, when you're interested, there's nothing more interesting to people than you being interested in them, mm -hmm. <laughs> letting them talk about themselves. And that's what I do, that's my mm -hmm. job. Dr. Thomas travels to New Guinea at least twice a year and recently wrote a book about the country's birds. Back in New Jersey, he supports other researchers like Montclair State University biology professor Jennifer Crumans, who is working on infestation of hemlock trees by an insect called the woolly adelgid. It's an insect that, that basically hmm. sucks the carbon out of the plant. It's sucking from the, the phloem of the plant. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, plants go to a lot of trouble to to fix carbon and make their own biomass and the plant and the insect is in effect parasitizing that plant. My next logical question is, is how is this affecting the soil because all plants, it seems so simple but very logically all plants are sitting in soil and yeah. soil is their foundation mm -hmm. and their, mm -hmm. where all their resources and all their nutrition comes from mm -hmm. um, in terms of mineral nutrients. But if this insect is sucking all the carbon out there that would otherwise get put down into the soil what goes on in the canopy of a tree directly mm -hmm, affects mm -hmm, what goes on in the mm -hmm. soil. And obviously we all understand that what goes on in the soil is where the nutrients and everything comes up for the tree. And so how are those things feeding back on one another? Dr. Crumans grew up in the hill country of Texas discovering nature by horseback. I spent a lot of time out in the woods just exploring mm. just from the back of a horse. Um, and that was, it's a different, you see the world differently from up there and animals aren't afraid of you, the deer aren't afraid of you and you can explore and you can see things and go out in the woods and notice differences um, in the habitat and the environment. Did people say you're a, you're a curious child and you, mm -hmm. did people say things like that to you or do you feel that you were you know naturally inquisitive kind of person when you were little or? I remember wondering why bubbles stayed bubbles. How bubbles were bubbles you say? Yeah I wondered how bubbles were bubbles. Mostly I wanted to know how the world worked and, and you know and I can't think of a, a simpler turn than the mechanisms of why nature is the way nature is and why do we have different species here and there and, and that's what I do now so I'm looking back on it through the lens that I have now but at the time I just I just was really interested in um, the, the way nature worked and why life exists the way hmm. it exists and that you have different habitats and different environments. So now I'm an ecologist and I study you know the nature of organisms in, in any environment and how they interact with each other mm -hmm. and their environment but even before I truly understood that ecology was a field you can think about processes like the processes of the way the human body works that you do mm -hmm. learn in biology and the, and the processes of, um, of, of a plant 
why do plants have flowers the way they have flowers and why does one plant have this flower and a different plant has a completely yeah. different flower and there's there's processes to explain that and for a plant it's you know one plant is pollinated by a, a hummingbird and another plant is pollinated by a moth and so um, the reasoning behind things is very different I like taking on scientific projects that are um, uh, just slightly intellectually challenging and it's it's like really it needs to be something that I'm gonna have to figure out mm -hmm. I don't just want to go ask a question and knowing that I'm gonna easily get an answer it See. needs to be something I'm gonna have to kind of creatively figure out